Luca Nation. I'm pumped. I have three different plays for you guys today. Three different plays. You know why? Because I couldn't pick a favorite play. And I was like, wow, these are all so different. They're all so valuable. I believe in them so much, but I can't choose one and I don't want to forget them. So I'm going to bring you all three and leave the choice to you. Before we do that, Cage, welcome back to another episode of Lucas, Tigers, and Bronzo Mai. You know, other than uh, ranting on Gary V, <laughs> talking about Top Shot, uh, praising all of your amazing plays and your amazing hair, what's top of mind for you, big man? Uh, listen, it is amazing. I'm tired. You know, I, I had some people over uh, yesterday. We opened some cards. We opened some boxes of cards. We had, uh, I think I mentioned it in the Coffee with Cage episode. I was going to have on, uh, have over friends, um, you know, a little, little friend of, of Ian's and uh, and her parents. And we haven't seen them since before Christmas. We were doing a little Christmas uh, exchanging gifts in March. I put on my Bell Schnickel t-shirt from the office. Um, you know, we, we put on some Christmas music in the middle of March, even though it's St. Patrick's Day, and we did like a little Christmas. And the kids got to open stuff up. Ian got a Tyler Hero pink jersey, you know, the Miami Heat jersey, and he got a uh, Lamelo Ball her Hornets jersey, and uh, Leah got like a little drawing pad and stuff. And of course, the the dad and I exchanged boxes of cards. And one of the boxes I bought him was a Stadium Club Chrome. He's a Stadium Club fan, and I'll I'll send the picture to you. Maybe we could post it. But he's opening the packs on like a fourth or fifth pack. He says, this is the best thing I've ever opened in a pack myself. And, you know, he opens cards and he flips it over and it was a on-card Tatis Auto out of 25. Pretty sweet, right? So, and it's been, sitting in my, it's been sitting in my basement since like November when I bought it for him as a Christmas gift. Just like sitting there, wrapped up, wow. ready to go. And, you know, he's like, this is great. He was like tweeting, you know, he's messaging it out. To, so that was a nice little, you know, nice little, yeah, it was a great box. Like, we're he's a Red Sox fan. Um, so he had like an Ortiz refractor and like all kinds of cool stuff. So of course I, I got a heritage box and you know, the heritage high numbers, you either get a, uh, you either get one real one auto or one real one relic in the box, the whole box, you get one hit and no guaranteed auto. And I got a Jeff McNeil Jersey card was my big hit. So he leaves with a Tatis. That sounds like an auto. investment banker. That sounds like an investment banker. <laughs> He's actually got a pretty cool name. Um, not for him, I'm sure, but he looks like a squirrel. They call him the squirrel. <laughs> He's got a pretty funny, pretty funny nickname. I'm sure he doesn't love it, but uh, yeah, he's a squirrel. But yeah, so I didn't, you know, I, I love it. I'll open anything, you know. Awesome. And, I have and that's going to bring uh, me to play number one, and I'm going to give you the mic right back. Is Jeff McNeil? No, nice. Revolution <laughs> Boxes. Oh, My it. play is actually Revolution Boxes. How nice are those cards? They are amazing. I, I'm going to send some in with the Luca Nation sub this time around. We didn't really hit any great stuff, but we love opening those. We love the price point. We Affordable. love the card. Yep affordable and here's the thing not only do you make money on rookies there's a lot of good players like lebron in that black jersey that's mm -hmm. a nice card that's a pretty cool card. nice card right so when you open a box and you're only shooting for really high-end rookies and it's an expensive box that's scary revolution lower end box beautiful cards you have the astro you have the galactic those really cool parallels and they added a, a cubic this year they yeah. got a 50 cubic they added. if you hit a lamello ball i had pretty if you hit a lamello you're basically paying off the box, which is a huge hit. That's yep. awesome. Now you got SGA in there, which is a nice play. You've got Luca, you've got Trey, you've got Zion, you've got Ja. You've got so many other ways to make money from that box. So that's play number one. Take a look at Revolution, whether that's the box or check out eBay. Check out eBay because people are selling some really, really nice fresh pulled cards from Revolution that you can sub that they may not want to sub. Can I add something to that play uh, to tell you why I like it even more than you might even realize? So Ian's favorite has been Revolution for a long time. And we do like, you know, Chinese New Year Revolution, you name it. So we go Because it's one of the few boxes you're able to buy for, you know, less than $1,000 now. And, and super shiny the whole deal. I've opened Revolution for the last five years worth of product. Because we even went back. We had people buy us Chinese New Year 15, 16, you know, you name it. I will tell you, they did something different with it this year. Because Revolution is not something I would tell you is good for grading in years past it's like a flimsy high foil like yep. the card edge stock and the corners where uh, you the cards come out and if you get a nine you should be thrilled whatever yep. they did this year i don't know if it's a thicker card stock or it's like, like there's like a film over the card the yep. cards are coming out in much better shape so so your play of opening boxes to grade and buying on ebay in years past, people would stay away from singles of Revolution on eBay because yep. you would know right off the bat that they're going to be in shit shape. 
they're not this year. So just a little inside info, because I opened three boxes with Ian in the last week. The cards are coming out in really good shape. So it's, it's even a better play than you realize. I appreciate it. I thought you would like it. Let's keep rocking then, okay? You know oh, who yeah. just got called up to the OKC Thunder? Pokoshevsky, mm. your Pok- play. Get out of here, Pokoshevsky. Your play. Yeah. Your play. He played uh, today. Nice. Mm-hmm. He had a monster game, 24 points. 24 no. and 10. Mm-hmm. Wow. He's, he, listen, that's a project. I mean, and you know what? What a good team to be on for a project, right? Talk about youth personified and a real potential upside for those guys with all the draft picks and craziness they have. Seven foot point guard, Alexander mm-hmm. Kokoshevsky. 23 points, 10 rebounds, four assists in his first game. He's in the starting lineup. Wow. Against the Grizzlies. Wow. Good for him. Play number two. Check out Starstock because I'm going to be doing that for him. He's going, to be, he's going to be putting up some numbers. He's that type of dynamic scorer that they needed. If you look at that team, that team is 17 and 22. Going into the season, people would have thought they'd be a, a 10 and 29 team at this point, right? Mm-hmm. They're 17 and 22. I'm not saying here they're going to make the playoffs, but they've needed one type of player. You know, they needed a score. They needed a score, a pure score. And that's what I think he's going to bring to them. Because the rest of the team, you know, like Kendrick Williams, Ken Rick Williams, uh, Darius Baisley, these are all tough, gritty guys that defend, right? They had a tough, gritty team. And that's how they, they, they churned out these wins, toughed them out, so to speak. And now you have a guy who's young, who's lanky, who could get some buckets. I think he's going to be their leading scorer in a lot of games. So you've said a couple times, and I'm, I'm kind of mad that I didn't buy more of them or that he actually came up and is going to do well and people are going to know who he is. I wanted Prism to come out before he exploded onto the scene, so I'm not happy. Yeah. But you've said a bunch of times to see Giannis in this draft. Now, he's not going to be built like Giannis. He never will be. Remember, Giannis was a lanky guy. He's not going to play defense like Giannis is either, but you never know mm-hmm. what his team's going to develop into. But this was my play from, from the draft, from when the draft happened. To, to be the potential Giannis type breakout of this draft. So I'm actually mad that he's on. <laughs> I wanted him to stay quiet. I wanted one more week. One more week. Yeah, everybody mentioning him. I'm like, shh, shh, that's my guy. I want to get him on the cheap. So hey, listen, bring him up. Luca Nation. This is this guy, he has a he has a chance. He's very skinny. He's very skinny. He's got to put on some size. Why does he bother you so much? He's got a jerk type game to him, though. If he can he can, he can develop as like a jerk Nowitzki type player. My only concern is take a look at this guy. He can be on your radar. I don't think anyone's going to notice him. He's in a small market. Uh, I think people are just going to be a blimp on the radar. But on Star Stock, and this is the maybe an issue, maybe this will be fixed. He only has autos listed. Yep. He only has autos. So there's something you guys may want to consider. It's a name. Go do your own research. I think this guy is going to be a very interesting play. Uh, he's going to be the bucket getter. Whether he's going to play long term or not, I, I, I can't answer that. But I think for the rest of the season, he's going to be twenty points, ten rebounds a game. He only has autos. That's why he didn't have a base card, and and he was just like quickly. So Emmanuel quickly was the same exact thing. So so and right now, top shots. Um, I mean, top shot. Uh, Starstock is not taking their. Um, they're not taking anything other than that that draft. So he has other cards, just not on not on uh, not on Starstock. Um, hmm. I think I got an auto of his and maybe it was it hoops premium. I might've got an auto of his, but he's definitely in, he's got base cards. He, you know, he's got other cards. He's, you know, I think he's in hoops. He's in other stuff, but just not anything that they put on star stock. Um, you know what I, but, I'll tell you guys to do then go to his cards on star stock, add to the watch list as more Pokoshevsky cards get added. You might be able to scoop them up, uh, first yep. for pennies. Oh yeah. People aren't looking at him. I like it. And he's awesome. the opposite of a blimp on the radar, though. He's the opposite. He's so skinny. He's a skinny. <laughs> Let this guy live. <laughs> Let him live, bro. <laughs> so who's the third play? Get off Pokoshevsky before everybody buys up all of it. I don't... I, here's the thing with SGA. So I'm a believer in SGA. The issue with SGA that's different from Luca or Trey is he doesn't have a monster fan base. Okay? Okay. That's the big issue. And a monster fan base creates demand, but it only creates demand for really two types of cards, base prism and prism silvers. That's where a mass can really move prices. But the one market that I'd recommend you take a look at is SGA RPAs. Take a look at SGA RPAs. I guarantee you they're a fraction of the cost of Trey Young. And I think when all said and done, in two, three, four, five years from now, 
It's a long-term play. Notice these three different plays. Pokashevsky, short-term. Revolution, nine to 12 months. SGA, this is a five-year play. Take a look at his RPAs. He's going to be an MVP caliber I like caliber it. I player. love this. I love this. So, guys, hit pause right now. And what I need you to do is go look at SGA, RPAs, PDQ, ASAP, and RSVP back to us that you did it. Now, that's a lot of friggin' letters. What just happened? <laughs> what just happened? I don't know. I understand what, what's the, going on. What is an, SG, an SGA RPA? SGA RPA, P, PDQ, PDQ, and rush ASAP to eBay to buy those PDQ and then RSVP back to us that you actually did this. There's too many letters, man. You drive me nuts. But yes, I love the play because SGA, you know what's weird about him? Maybe you tell me why. Is it because he's in OKC? Is it the same thing we worry about with like a Pokoshevsky? You were dead on about him. So I had a silver PSA 10 of him and I'm like, dude, he's better than people realize. He's going to go up and you were like, it's not going to fluctuate. And even if it does, it goes up a little bit because nobody cares and he's not dynamic and people don't love him the way they love a Luca. And, uh, and you were right. I took my money and I put it somewhere else. I think, I think what the beauty about the hobby is it's not enough to be right about a player. You have to know the player and you also need to understand how the card market works. So like, I see SGA as like a Microsoft or an Apple stock early on. It's not going to have these insane spikes. It's not a penny stock. It's not traded like a penny stock. I think it's just going to improve year over year, over year, over year, over year. And there's going to come a point where people are like, hmm, this guy bursts onto the scene. Well, he's been bursting onto the scene since he was 20 years old, leading a team that had no talent in OKC to damn near a playoff, uh, playoff team. And now they've added two players. Next year, they're not going to be much better. But in three years, four years, people are going to be like, where did this guy come from? We always say that, right? Where did Giannis come from? Yep. Well, he's been improving year over year. And just because he's not as flashy as Luca, or he doesn't chuck up air balls from half court like Trey, doesn't mean he's any worse. So I think the market's going to come to SGA. But when the market does come to him, I want you sitting on a really, really high – Highly prized card, not his silver. I, I, I want you to be on like a black gold SGA prism or an RPA where there's 10 of them, 50 of them. And you're like, you know what? I, I got this, you know, for 8,000 bucks instead of buying his silver for a thousand bucks. But now it's a $95,000 card, not an $8,000 card. So that's how I would play SGA. There you go, Cage. I like it. So my play for you guys is, is a guy who was the first overall pick. Um, six-time All-Star, five-time All-NBA selection, National College Player of the Year when he played in college. Um, but he's been missing something, right? He's been missing something for a while, and that is, you know, playing meaningful games, playing some playoff games, and maybe playing some, uh, you know, playing for a championship and adding a championship to um, to that resume. That many All Stars, that many NBAs. Some of the craziest and sickest highlight real dunks you could ever find adding to that resume. It sounds like a guy who you shouldn't be able to find his rookie PSA 10s for $100 or less. <laughs> but that's the play I'm bringing you today. And this is a play on, you probably have no idea who I'm talking about, but this is a play here on Kevin Durant, right? It's a play on, it's a play on, um, can't beat him, join him kind of stuff, right? So, so I was going to bring a Kevin Durant play today, and I was going to look for a Kevin Durant. It's Blake Griffin. Hey, well done, my friend. So I was going to bring. People forget Kevin how good play. Blake Griffin was at okay at Oklahoma. He, so you know I, his brother played there too. Yes, 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 one hundred percent, one hundred percent. And uh, so, but I was gonna bring a play on, on on Durant, and I'm like, you know, everybody's talking about him at the Dallas show. Everybody's like, Kevin Durant, 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 Durant. Let me find a Durant play, and I'm like, I remember he has the Dodge Charger. He's got the the the, the Fleer variant. He's got you know all these you know oh seven. There's no shortage of cars up a deck, and I'm like, let me find a PSA ten for a thousand for a couple hundred bucks. Nope, nope, they're on a thousand bucks, six hundred bucks, eight hundred bucks, nine hundred bucks, whatever it is. So I said, all right, well, Durant's prices are where they are because everybody expects the Nets to win a championship. You well, think it's not because you don't think it's because they listen to Andrew and Lucas Tigers and Bronze on a daily basis? Maybe, but you know there have been people on Durant before you. It's Durant. People think Durant's going to win the championship this year with the Nets, and and his prices are going up for it. So I'm like, all right, let me look at the rest of that team. 
right? So who else on that team stands to, you know, really see an increase in price if they play meaningful games in the playoffs, get to the finals, win a championship? And, you know, Harden, sure. I mean, he's never really won one, so that adds a little notch to the belt. But Harden stuff is far from cheap. Kyrie, he already won one. And I said, hey, wait a second. What is this going to do to Blake Griffin pricing, right? I mean, maybe nothing. Who knows? So I went on the low end and I looked and wouldn't you know, in the last week, I tried to stay away from the college stuff, guys, the college uniform stuff. But if you want a real bargain one, the 2009 Panini Prestige rookie in PSA 10, and I'm talking about the one where he's still in his Oklahoma uniform, it's card number 155. One sold this week, 50 bucks or best offer, 50 bucks or best offer, right? So now if you want to find one in his college uniform. In the last week, I saw two that sold. A 2009 Panini Adrenaline XL Extra Signature. Say that three times fast. But it's got him in his uniform, the Clippers, the whole deal. It's got a rookie. It's a cool-looking card. Lots of colors on it. Sold for $112.50. The one that I like is called the 2009 Panini Studio Rookie of Blake Griffin. It's cool. It's kind of got like a it looks like they stole it from, you know, one of those uh, upper deck signature cards. It looks a lot like, you know, the one where uh, the 2003 uh, Mello and LeBron rookie where they autograph it. But there's, there's like a big space for an autograph, but it's not signed. But Blake Griffin rookie card number 136, Panini Studio, sold this week for $86. So I got pictures of them all right over here, right? So there are plenty of Blake Griffin rookie cards from Panini from 2009 in PSA 10. For less than hundred dollars, no, there's a bunch of them on there right now for sale, hundred and change or best offer. Make an offer, and you can grab one. Why? Because there'll be a game in the playoffs where he goes crazy, right? There'll be a game in the playoffs where he has a bunch of rebounds. There'll be a game where he actually makes some sort of a contribution, and people are going to run to eBay to say he's going to win a championship. I want to buy the Blake Griffin cards, and there will no longer be any for under a hundred dollars. So Is this one of those things where? There isn't really a true leader of the team, so all of their cards are going to benefit equally. There's not going to be a Steph Curry or LeBron whose cards go through the roof. It's going to be, you know, four different guys whose cards are going to appreciate. Yeah, it's part of it. So I'm not telling you to buy Blake Griffin cards to hold forever. I'm not. I'm just saying that if you are a believer, and obviously there are a lot of people out there who believe that Kevin Durant is going to win a championship this year or at the very least be playing meaningful games with the Nets deep into the playoffs, then you have to believe – that that his team is going to be doing that, right? Obviously, he's not going to be playing for a different team. He's going to play for the Nets, which means Blake Griffin and um, and Spencer Dinwiddie. I mean, I mean, it means these guys are all going to be playing these meaningful games. So my play on it is really just a play on that. And uh, I think it's difficult to get into Durant for a bargain, but clearly you can buy his newest teammate for less than 100 bucks in PSA 10. Right for what it's going to cost you to grade something with any type of an expedited PSA, hundred bucks now. If you can buy a PSA ten of this guy's rookie for less than that, and really it is a flip. It really is buy a couple of these fifty, sixty, eighty, a hundred dollar cards, and sit on them for two months, and they're playing in the playoffs, and they're going to be triple what they are now because people are just going to go on and say, "Let me find the cheapest PSA ten Blake Griffin rookie for when he wins the championship." And the one you bought for 50 bucks is going to be 150 or $200. It's just the way it works. So you're, you're looking ahead of the playoffs. And also, you're not looking at Durant and Harden. You're looking at that next person. You're looking at Blake Griffin. So it's an easy way to get in. It's kind of like betting on the Nets and winning a championship, right? You, know, you put 50 bucks on the Nets winning a championship and, and cash out at $95 if they win. But by buying Blake Griffin, you just have to – they make the playoffs and he's got to be there. He's got to be in the lineup, you know, have a nice play, you know, grab some rebounds, contribute in some meaningful way as the team's moving on and, you know, double your, double your investment on this. It's just one of those low-hanging La- fruit type last plays. Last thing. Yeah. And, and how much lower can they go, right? At the same – like, think about – like, we always think about upside, but I got this message from someone. It was a really well-meaning message, right? He was like, you know, you gave this Tom Brady prison play. But, oh, but, I read that. You know, I read I, that. But you, you gave, you know, last year LeBron Prism's cards were really, really high, and but then they, they tagged. I'm worried that the same thing's going to happen with this Tom Brady card. And I'm like, it's a $7 card. 
Just give it raw. Where, where, where is it going to tank? To negative four? Yep. That's a big drop. <laughs> well, so that's just somebody who is, and, and the point is correct. It's you try not to buy at a high, right? But your thought was, you know, over time, this guy just won a Super Bowl with it. People who are Tampa Bay fans, and he brought a Tampa Bay thing. If you get this graded or you hang on to it, it's one that is like a no-brainer, low entry point for a card that's got some meaning to it. It's the same thing with LeBron. And you want to see LeBron's prism tanked, sure. His base prism card should not have been selling for $600 in PSA 10. Correct. Right? So but, the raw is... card at the, but, but the crazy part was the raw card was $100 at that time. Yep. This is a six dollar card, so yes, it could tank from a hundred to fifty, but what 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 is your seven dollar card going to tank from seven to three? Like it'll always be a five dollar card. You'll always be like, hey, this is Tom Brady. This is his first. This is the prism of his first winning jersey or first winning uh, Super Bowl with the Bucks. So anyway, by the way, you know it's daylight savings time. Yes, we don't have that here. Ah. So when we had our meeting. I was waiting for 3 p.m. It was 2 p.m. here. Mm, see, there so. you go. Well, I got to tell you, I was because we were up late last night. We had guests over. We watched eating movies. too much Chick Fil A. I watched eating too much Chick Fil A and opening cards. I mean, talk about were you eating Chick Fil A from 6 p.m. till midnight? Be honest. I like, do. I've I haven't stopped eating Chick Fil A. I'm eating it today too. I mean, this is like you saw how much I had. I sent you a picture. But it, it, I'm talking about perfect eating, right? We watch. I watched Coming to America, Coming to America Two, which by the way was better than I thought it was going to be, and had some Chick-fil-A, open cards, but, you know, they stayed late. We watched, what did I, we watched some weird horror movie from Amazon after, after that. And, uh, you know, they went home well after midnight and then, you know, it's, it's get on, get on eBay and look for bargains. And at one fifty nine, the, the clock changed to three. And I'm like, what, what happened here? <laughs> so I went to sleep at 3 a.m. without even realizing I was doing it. So yeah. Love you, Luca Nations. Enjoy Luca Nation. Thank you.